Praise the Lord. Merry Christmas. I'm so happy to see you all here today. So, uh, please be seated. My original plan was to have a quick sermon, a couple of uh, kids' songs, and then call it a day. And then Lisa came and said she had found, like, two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, that she found a, a script which did not require a lot of practice. And so I said, okay, we can do that. And then I was looking at the script, and it didn't seem quite as small a script as I had <laughs> been perhaps led to believe. And so rather than going through a, you know, what I had been intending to do today, because I love you, I'll do a little bit quicker. All right, so, I am so glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Uh, I like to say that every day is Christmas Day to a Christian. Every day we walk and breathe and have our being within the very presence who became flesh, whose birth we are celebrating today. So today, why don't we quickly turn to Luke chapter 2, we'll read from verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy. Let's all say great joy. Are you feeling joyous? If you're not, you can. Which shall be to all people. Let's say all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly... There was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. In fact, why don't you read this with me? Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Thank you. And as it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste. What did they do? They came with haste and found Mary and Joseph in the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they had made known abroad the sayings which was told them concerning this child. And so I wanted to look real quick this morning. Thank you. Please be seated. Or I should say thank you, and if you would like to be seated, please feel free to do so. One of these days we're going to have somebody just remain standing, and that's going to be hilarious to me. Uh, I wanted to look quickly this morning at the idea that is presented here of peace on earth and goodwill, goodwill toward man. So goodwill, I'm not going to get all geeky into the, into the Greek, but the term is, uh, I'm going to get a little bit geeky into the Greek, but it's eudokia, and it means satisfaction, delight, or good pleasure. And often we think this means that because he is born, we'll be nice to each other, right? Peace on earth and goodwill towards men. That means we're going to be nice to each other. Well, clearly that hasn't happened yet, uh, but... I was looking through and it really just refers to the, to the satisfaction or the idea of a good pleasure. And of course, if there's a good pleasure, that means there must also be a not good pleasure. So Matthew eleven twenty five 25 and 26 has this same phrase when it says, At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, 
for it seemed good in thy sight. And that seemed good is that same phrase. So the Lord had satisfaction and found good pleasure in his revealing the mysteries of the Godhead through himself to babes. And I should say children, because then all the, all the attractive young ladies are going to think it's only for them. <laughs> and then Philippians chapter 2.13, Paul writes, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Again, that is the phrase. And, and then in 2 Thessalonians 1.11, he says, Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. And so as I was reading through this and, and this text, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men, I started to understand that satisfaction, delight, and good pleasure can only be found in Christ Jesus. There is no satisfaction in this world, and we know this because there's never been a person who has made enough money. They can be worth trillions of dollars, and they're still, and they switch to trying to uh, gain power and influence rather than just dollars. Humanity is never satisfied because there is no satisfaction outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no delight. We think of delight in terms of phrases like childish delight and that unabashed and unreserved glee that comes with something that just thrills your soul. And yet everything this earth has to offer brings with it a taint and a seed of destruction. So delight is only possible in the purity and the holiness that the Lord Jesus Christ brings to us. Good pleasure is only available through the Lord Jesus Christ. This world offers all kinds of temporary, if not evil, then at least not good pleasures designed to lure you farther away from the good pleasure the Father intends for us. And so the Lord Jesus Christ became flesh and born and lived and dwelt among us so that you and I will understand, will have that opportunity to know what it is like to be satisfied, to know what it is like to find delight, and to know what it is like to live in His good pleasure. Also, we are offered peace. And this world, as you can tell, especially if you are uh, interested in the news, uh, this world does not offer peace. It offers turmoil and stress. And in fact, right now, the, the current theme seems to be striving to teach people to compete against each other uh, as ruthlessly as possible. And yet, if there is to be peace on earth, it needs to start within these earthen vessels. And the Lord tells us these things in John chapter 14. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, what does the Comforter do? He provides peace, bringing comfort, right? But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. And then he finishes the thought with peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And he goes on to say uh, some of the bad things, we would think, uh, that are going to happen. He says, I tell you these things so that when they come to pass, you shall know and believe. Right? He doesn't tell us what the future holds to scare us. He doesn't tell us of a judgment to come to scare us. He tells us of the end times and, and uh, what was to come so that as they happen, we can say, the Lord Jesus Christ told us this is so. And if he knew this was going to happen centuries before it happened, it must mean that he is in control. It must mean that he also knows the outcome 
And so when he tells us uh, not to let our hearts be troubled, it's because he knows the other side of this difficulty. He says, let it not be afraid. It's because he knows what's on the other side of this fearsome specter. This is the peace that he gives to us. The peace that he leaves with us. And he says, I leave with you. And I'm not going to give it like the world does where you give them a taste and you yank it away. The world, the world offers things much like a drug dealer does, evidently. I haven't found it out myself, but you know, according to the newspapers, they give you a little bit for free. And then when you're hooked on it, they start uh, charging you. Boy, that sounds a lot like government. Uh, anyway. Um, he does not give us peace like the world gives us peace. He gives us true peace, an everlasting peace, and a, a peace which we, need to, we can only receive through Him. So peace on earth, goodwill toward men. These things, if we will receive them, bring glory to God in the highest. Right, that's what they said. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill. If we receive His blessings, we bring Him glory because we allow Him to be what He intends to be in our lives so we can be who He wants us to be. Uh, and finally, He demonstrates this meekness and, and lowliness of heart in the circumstances of His incarnation. He was born in the form of a servant. And, and most of us are familiar with Philippians 2, uh, verse 5 and 11, where it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, or as a result, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He was born, he laid down his life, he picked his life back up again and returned to glory so that you and I might share in that divine relationship with him which, he's, which he desires. And so on this day, this Christmas day that we celebrate the birth of the Lord God Almighty become flesh, let's take a moment and rejoice in the peace which only He can bring and in the satisfaction that only He provides and the salvation that only He brings. Praise the Lord. So Lisa will leave it to the... Oh, hold on. Oh, hold on. Speaking of partaking in the salvation that only He provides, following the play, we will be baptizing my buddy David. Yeah. 
Joseph led your reign with us sing our Savior's birth. That was so nice to hear. Our children did an excellent job, didn't they? Yes, they did. Songs that remind us of the reason for the season, they're very important. Adults singing about the birth of Christ and children singing about the birth of Christ, doesn't it make you just want to smile all over? But it does raise a very important question. Who is this baby? whose birth we celebrate at Christmas. And with such an important question to answer this morning, I am so pleased that all of you have shown up to help me in a research project. We're going to be researching the names of the one true and living God. Do you want us to pray to stand? Do you want us to read Hebrews 48? Let's do Christ who sang yesterday, or the today, forever. The way to the again, or the way to me, this us, the cry to sing yesterday, today, forever. Thank you, no matter it. That is a thought provoking scripture. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Can this be true? Come with us as we dig through the pages of God's Word. I think it's going to be an interesting study as we find proof that the one true God of the Old Testament, the God of the Jewish nation, manifested himself as the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. That God of the Old Testament is the same Jesus we serve today. Do you want to say, do you want to a God, go to a big, powerful God, became this baby? Yes, that's right, Tom. The one great, big, powerful God of the Old Testament became a baby. Of course, he didn't stay a baby. He grew up into the man we call the Lord Jesus, 
the one whose birth we celebrate today on Christmas. The who, according to Hebrews 13.8, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Cool. Let's tell you this Bible. Yes, let's start researching, looking in the Bible. Where should we start, Tom? The rest of the Old Testament, the read Latinus, chapter 3, verse 9, 10, 13. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me. Whoa. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee into Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you. They shall say unto me, What's his name? What shall I say unto him? Wow. That's what a question. Yes, what a request. Moses asked that God reveal himself to man by one name. If the heaven of heavens could not contain God, how can a name describe him? What one name would be adequate to God's greatness? Okay, Ronnie, the next is 9, verse 15. Exodus 9, 14 and 15. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. I am. I am Jehovah. I am that I am. I will be that I will be. The eternal self-existing one, the never-changing one, the God of revelation ever revealing himself to mankind in greater debts. To Moses, he was Jehovah, the I am that I am. But who was he to other Old Testament characters? As we turn the pages of God's word, let us look and listen. Perhaps we will receive a greater revelation of God's glory. Good dear. What are we now? Let's turn to the first book of the Bible, Genesis, and let's listen to Isaac's story. Greetings. My name is Isaac. To me, God is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who sees and provides. I will never forget the day when I was about 25 years old, I climbed, climbed Mount Moriah with my father, Abraham, who were going, we were going to worship. I carried the wood, and my father had in his hands a knife in, in the fire, but something was missing. There was no lamb for a sacrifice. Father, I asked, where is the lamb? My father Abraham answered, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Imagine my shock when I discovered that I was the sacrifice. Now I could have overpowered my aged father, but I didn't. I submitted my will to the father of my father and his God. After I was bound to the altar, my father raised the knife and I closed my eyes, waiting for the cold blade to pierce my throat. Abraham, Abraham, a voice from heaven rang out. Don't touch your son. Now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your only son from me. Phew. In wonder, I opened my eyes. I couldn't believe it. A ram was caught in the thicket by his horns, just as my father Abraham had said. God had provided a sacrifice. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who foresees and provides, yeah. Jehovah Jireh had provided redemption for me. Isaac, praise his name. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. 
Jehovah Gwen. Jehovah Jireh, the self-existing eternal one who foresees and provides. That's great. Who's next? Now let's turn to the next book, the book of Exodus, and hear the story of a descendant of Isaac. Her name is Miriam, the sister of Moses. Miriam, the sister of Moses, great. What revelation of his name did Jehovah give to Miriam? Hi, friends. My name is Miriam. Oh, yes. <laughs> My name is Miriam, and I have two very great and powerful brothers, Moses and Aaron. And I'm sure you've all heard the story how Moses led our people the Israelites out of Egypt, out of the bondage that they held us in, and how we miraculously crossed the Red Sea on dry ground. What a time that was, millions of people crossing the Red Sea on dry ground with the Egyptians behind us. Can you imagine when we got across safely? And let, let's say about the Egyptians, they just didn't make it, but we did. And we rejoiced so greatly we were so happy to be free from the Egyptians, safe across the Red Sea. We just worshiped and praised, danced, and sang a new song unto the Lord. I myself got so excited that I took off running. I grabbed a timbrel, took off running and praising God. And all the other women grabbed timbrels too, and we just, just ran and danced and praised the Lord. What a time of rejoicing that was. But when it was time to take off and start walking through the desert after three days, and we found no water, and our mouths were so dry, our tongues were swollen and, and stuck to the roofs of our mouths, we started complaining to Moses, hey, what'd you do, bring us out into the desert to die out here? We need water. And finally, when we came to Mara, after three days, we found water, wow. What a relief. Uh-oh. Not quite. The water was bitter, and we couldn't drink it. Once again, what did we do? We forgot God's great deliverance across the Red Sea, and we complained to Moses, we're going to die out here with no water. But what did Moses do? The only thing he knew, to pray to God. And God showed him a tree to cast into the water, and the waters turned sweet, and we had all the water we needed. Once again... Our God came through, and he gave us a great promise at that time that if we would obey his word, keep his commandments, keep his statutes, and do what's right, he would keep us, and we would not get all the diseases that the Egyptians got because he is the Jehovah Ropha, the God that healeth. Wow, poor Moses. He got all the blame for everything. I mean, we complained to him about no food. We wanted, we wanted meat. We, we, we were tired of manna. We were tired of walking through the desert. We just complained all the time to Moses, and he got the blame for everything. Even I got upset with Moses. And I went to Aaron. I said, hey, you know, Moses isn't the only one God can talk to. I mean, you're the high priest. I am a prophetess. I'm, I'm tired of, God, of Moses calling all the shots. After all, I watched over him when he was a baby, and I protected him. He needs to listen to his older sister. Oh, boy. <laughs> was I ever mistaken on that one? We got called on the carpet by the Lord himself. And God punished me and struck me with leprosy. My skin turned immediately white, and it was, a, it was a sentence that I would be put out of the camp and probably die a slow and painful death. But Aaron pled my case to Moses, and Moses being the kind brother that he was, he prayed for me. He prayed that God would forgive me and heal me, and Jehovah Ropha did heal me and didn't make me uh, do the sentence that I deserved. I can say from the bottom of my heart, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities and healeth all thy diseases. Thank you, ma'am.
Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh, the self-existing one that foresees and provides. What's next? Next, we'll look at Jehovah Rapha, the one who heals. Let's turn another page of God's word and hear from Moses' servant, Joshua. Great. What is Joshua? Hello, everyone. My name is Joshua. Thank you for inviting me. My people, the Israelites, were camped at Rephidim when the Amalekites came against us. Moses gave me orders. Choose out men. Tomorrow when you go to fight the Amalekites, I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. As my men and I fought, Moses held up the rod, and we prevailed. When he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. When Moses tired and sat down on a rock, Aaron and Hur held up his hands, lifting up the rod until the Amalekites were defeated. It was the God-given rod, the wonder-working rod, the rod that had brought the plagues upon Egypt, the rod that had opened a path through the Red Sea. It was the rod of God's mighty hand. It was this rod, as a banner of God, that God used to bring the victory. On the battlefield, Moses built an altar and called it Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is my banner. So before every battle, the priest would say, Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble. Neither be ye terrified because of them, for the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies, to save you. Thank you, Joshua. Let us read Isaiah 59, 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Jehovah Jireh, the self-existing eternal one that foresees and provides. Jehovah Rophe, the Lord who heals. Jehovah Nissi, the Lord our banner. Let's go from here into the book of Judges where we find Gideon, another mighty warrior of Israel. Yes, the good story be good. Let's listen to Gideon's revelation of the name of Jehovah. Gideon, I mean, sorry, Gideon. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings, everyone. As you now know, my name is Gideon. <laughs> now, the Midianites were giving us Israelites fits. I mean, we deserved it because we had drifted into idolatry after the day of Joshua. But that knowledge didn't make it any easier for the punishment. Every year, just as our crops were ready for harvesting, the Midianites swooped in and stole our crops. All of our hard work just went into the barns of the Midianites. I desperately wanted someone to do something about it. I did not expect that someone to be me. <laughs> if I wasn't so startled when the angel of the Lord first approached me and called me a mighty man of valor, I probably would have laughed out loud. Me? Gideon? A mighty man of valor? I was the baby of a family, the coward hiding from the enemy. But then Jehovah said to me, Peace be unto thee. Fear not. At his words, peace and courage flowed into me. By faith, I built an altar and called it Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is my peace. It's amazing how the touch of God can change a man. Before it was over, I led 300 men to a mighty victory against an army that numbered as the sand by the seaside. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. 
Thank you, again. Jehovah, the self-existing eternal one. To Isaac, he was the provider. To Miriam, he was the healer. To Joshua, he was the banner. And to Gideon, he was peace. Who are you to Father King David? Great question. Let's find out. Who was Jehovah to the great King David? King David. Hello, everyone. My name is David. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. I was the king. I'm sorry. I was the shepherd. I was the king. I was the man after God on her. But more importantly, who was Jehovah to me? What a question. I was What a question. I wrote many, many songs, tried to answer the question. My first and perhaps greater revelation of Jehovah, of um, Cain, no, in dramatic time of deliverance, like Isaac, no, in dramatic time of war, like Joshua and Gilding, but I came in a gentle unfolding as I watch my father chip in a high and a hear sigh. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He made me to lay down in a green pasture. He restored my soul. He led me to the still water. He restored my soul. He led me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Jay, do I, do I, do I walk to the, to the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil for the, for the art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they come for me. They prepare a table before before me in the presence of my enemy. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, a little nervous. You're doing well. Prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anoint my head with oil, my cup running over. Surely, and goodness and mercy shall follow me all the day of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 Good job, Israel. Now, what is my shepherd? Jehovah Rohi, the Lord is my shepherd. Let's move into the book of Jeremiah, where this prophet of God reveals who Jehovah is. Prophet Jeremiah. Hi, my name's Jeremiah. You know, I was called the weeping prophet for good reason. I lived in a sad day and saw my people carried in captivity for, by Babylon for their idolatry. They turned their back on Jehovah. They despised his provision of redemption as Jehovah Jireh. Consequently, he could not be to them Jehovah Rofa, their healer. Without Jehovah Nisi, their banner, they were defeated at every turn because they had forsaken their peace, Jehovah Shalom. They were turned by internal strife and outward wars. They refused to follow the leading of their shepherd, Jehovah Rofi, and they suffered for their disobedience. But Jehovah had promised generations before that he would establish David's kingdom and throne forever. How could this be? God's people carried away in captivity. Mm -hmm. God gave me the answer to that question. Judah would return from captivity on the future family tree of David. I saw a righteous branch, a king who would reign and prosper and execute judgment and justice on earth, Jehovah's sick canoe. 
the Lord our righteousness. Through Jehovah Sidkenu, Israel would again be redeemed, healed, victorious, at peace, and righteous as they followed their true shepherd. To us we, the brother and sister, were been one. Yes, let's read together Isaiah 11, 1. It's up here on the screen. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. A rod out of the stem of Jesse. A rod. A God-given, wonder-working rod from the family of Jesse, the father and root of David. A branch shall grow out of his roots, a branch of righteousness on the family tree of David, Jehovah Sitkanu. Yes, this speaks of the Messiah, the Savior of the world who is yet to come at this point in the Old Testament. The Jewish people looked for and longed for his coming for centuries. Let's read the first of God, sorry, nine, six. Let's read together Isaiah 9, 6. That's a good idea, Tom. For unto us a son is given, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. A branch on the family tree, a child, a son called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The Son is the Mighty God. The Son is the Father. Could this Son be an even greater revelation of Jehovah? Could this be the branch of righteousness, Jehovah Sidkenu? Well, let's read the first of God, Psalm 13. Okay, that's to read it together. Isaiah 7, 14. Read for the word of the kid, the sign, the whole of the sign. Behold, a virgin shall bear. conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel means God with us. God with us. Could this son be God with man, God with us, Jehovah in flesh? Do us read the first of God, Psalm 12, 2. Okay, I'll read, let's read together. Behold, oh, God, God is my salvation. I will Christ trust and not and be afraid. Pray. For the, the Lord, Lord Jehovah and is my strength and my and song. He has also become my salvation. Jehovah has become my salvation. Jehovah has become my savior, a child, a son, Emmanuel, God with us. Can it all fit together? It must. Let's turn another page. It's time for us to look in the New Testament and to see if the God of the Old Testament is the same as the God in the New Testament. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. Long lay the world in sin and error pining Till he appeared and the soul felt its worth A thrill of hope, 
gospel is peace. Chain shall he break, for the slave is our brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name Christ is the Lord oh praise his name forever his power through 23. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together. She was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Don't you know we love you? Don't you know we love you? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Baby Jesus, baby Jesus, Lord, look who's here, Lord, look who's here. A shepherd come to praise you, a shepherd come to praise you with his lamb, with his lamb. Baby Jesus, baby Jesus, look who's here, look who's here. I came with lots of presents, I came with lots of presents, just for you, just for you. Baby Jesus, baby Jesus, listen now, listen now. Angel voices singing, angel voices singing. Baby Jesus, baby Jesus, 
The angel said, you're favored, for soon you'll bear the Savior. I wonder who this could be, that God would choose someone like me. We were lonely shepherds on a hill on that night so quiet and still when the angels began to sing to us about the newborn king. Glory to God, we began to sing, in Bethlehem is the born king. Peace on earth, goodwill to men, Jesus will save your soul. Jesus will save you from your sin. We wise men traveled far, led by the brilliant star. We precious gifts did bring to worship Jesus Christ, our King. a son, Emmanuel, God with us, a savior, Jesus. Jehovah has become my savior. Could it really be? Last week of first of God, Hebrews 38. Okay, we have to get it back up on the screen again before we can read it, Tom. There. Yeah. Um, Hebrews 13, 8. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's read it together. Jesus Christ, Christ the same, same yesterday, yesterday and, today and today and forever. forever. Jesus the same yesterday, today, forever. Jehovah, the God of the Old Testament, is the only unchanging one, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Can Jesus Christ be Jehovah revealed to man? The Word made flesh? Well, if this is so, Jesus Christ will have the very same attributes as Jehovah God. Just as Jehovah Jireh provided a sacrifice for Isaac, Jesus Christ must provide the needs of his people. Is that so? Does the Lord Jesus provide for anyone in the New Testament? <laughs> Hi there, I'm just an ordinary kid, but boy do I have a good story for you guys. How could an ordinary man take one little boy's lunch, just five loaves, I do the five things but my hands are full, and two fishes, 
and feed 5,000 people. According to this, it's actually more than that, but... Only the Almighty God could perform such a miracle like that. And that is indeed what Jesus did one afternoon with my lunch. Jesus had taken his apostles into the desert to teach them privately. But as they went, people hurried and followed him. The sick, the weary of heart, and the curious followed him into the desert, hoping for miracles or just simply to understand. I follow too. Jesus told us about the kingdom of God and healed so many people of their sicknesses. Many hearts were changed that day. As the sun began to set in the west, Jesus' apostles began to worry, Lord, shouldn't we send these people away so they can get some sleep and some food? Jesus looked at them and said, give them food and let them eat. But Lord, we don't have anything to give. There's only a boy with, who has five loaves and two fishes. Should we go into the town and buy more food? There are 5,000 men here, not including the women and children. Uh, that was me. I was a boy who had five loaves and two fishes it, for my lunch. It wasn't much, but I was willing to share what I had. And then we all got through eating, and there were 12 baskets of leftovers. You wanted to know if Jesus could provide for his people in the New Testament? He sure could and did. I saw it with my own eyes and my own food. I love his story. Yes, that truly is a remarkable story. The Lord Jesus certainly provided. So now I have another question. Is Jesus Christ Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals? The Lord heals. Yes, he is. Okay. Does Jesus heal? Does he ever? Not only did he heal me, he raised me from the dead. I'm not kidding. He really did. My father is Jairus. Um, he was an official in a synagogue in Galilee. One day, I was really sick, so sick that I was dying. My father had heard Jesus could heal the sick, so he went looking for him. Well, before he could find Jesus and get back home, I died. Yes, I actually really died. My mother and grandparents and the servants and everyone were crying and crying. My mother sent a servant to tell my dad that it was too late for Jesus to come because their beloved daughter was dead. But when Jesus heard, he said, do not be afraid, only believe. When Jesus and Jairus finally got to my house, Jesus asked everybody, why are you making such a fuss and crying? This little girl is not dead, only asleep. Then my dad and mom and Jesus and three of his disciples went into the house where they had me all laid out for my funeral. Jesus took my hand and he said, little girl, I say to you, get up. And so I did. I got up. And guess what? I wasn't even sick anymore. So, like I said, Jesus not only healed me, Jairus' daughter, he raised me from the dead. Wow, good night, an accurate story. I can't argue with that story either. The Lord Jesus Christ certainly healed. But what about Jehovah Nissi? What about the standard, the rod that brings deliverance? Do I say the fall of Nicodemus? Here you go, Nicodemus. Good question. What about that wonder-working rod that brought deliverance to Israel? Well, let me tell you. I am Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, a rabbi. One night I went to ask Jesus some questions. In our discussion, Jesus told me many strange things that were hard for me to understand. Things like being born of water and of spirit and of the Son of Man being lifted up. It was at Calvary when I went with my friend Joseph to take the body of Jesus down from the cross that I began to understand. As I gazed upon the cross on which Jesus hung, I saw the Son of Man lifted up, the banner of my redemption. The rod Moses lifted up as Israel fought, as well as the serpent he lifted up in the wilderness. 
These were banners of Jehovah Nissi. They brought victory to Israel. The cross of Calvary is the banner of Jesus Christ. When that banner was raised, death, hell, and the grave were defeated. With Jehovah Jesus as our banner, we need not fear. We shall triumph. Jehovah Nasi, the word my banner. Yes, Jehovah Nisi. Now what about Jehovah Shalom? Is Jesus Christ the Lord, my peace? Greetings, my name is Zebedee. Have you ever been in a storm at sea? It's not a pleasant experience. Now, I have lived around seamen all my life. I had heard talk about lots of storms and had even experienced a few. Certainly a frightening experience. The power of the sea in a storm is awesome. But what you want to know is, can Jesus bring peace? Let me tell you, he can. He definitely can. Anybody who can calm a storm with three little words can bring peace anywhere, anytime. But I'm getting ahead of my story. My sons, James and John, were in a boat with Jesus and his other disciples when a terrible storm arose. On the Sea of Galilee, it can happen just like that. They knew they were just going to, they were going to drown. Somebody finally came to his senses and, enough to wake up Jesus. Jesus calmly got up, went to the rail of the ship, and said, Peace, be still. Suddenly the storm hushed. The peace was so real that you could almost feel it. Can Jesus bring peace? Yes, he can, for he is the Prince of Peace. Indeed, only the Creator could calm the forces of creation. But how can that be? There is only one God, one Creator, and his name is Jehovah. Hmm. Well, let's move on. Does Jesus Christ claim to be Jehovah Rohi, the Lord is my shepherd? Hello, everyone. My name is Mary Magdalene. The Lord Jesus was a shepherd to me. He led me in green pastures and beside still waters. When I was possessed by evil spirits, he restored my soul. He led me in the path of righteousness. When I followed him to Calvary through the valley of the shadow of death, I grieved, but I did not fear because his teaching and his love comforted me. Is Jesus Christ Jehovah Rohi, the Lord my shepherd? Yes, he is the good shepherd, the good shepherd who gave his life for his sheep. The Lord is my shepherd. Yes, he is. If Jesus Christ is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides, and Jehovah Rophe, the Lord who heals, and Jehovah Nisai, the Lord my banner, and Jehovah Shalom, the Lord my peace, and Jehovah Rohi, the Lord my shepherd, he has to be Jehovah Sitkanu, the Lord my righteousness. That would make Jesus Christ the Lord of glory, the one true God. The God of the Old Testament manifested in flesh as a tiny baby. That means that Jesus Christ is the name of that one and only true God. Exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted forever, exalted, and I will praise His name. He is the Lord, forever His truth shall reign. Exalted on high, 
he is exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise him, he is exalted forever, exalted and I will praise his name. Exalted, the King is exalted on high. Well, it certainly is clear that Jesus is the only one true God of the Old Testament and of the New Testament. But what about here in the present day? Let's look at these names again. Is Jesus Christ Jehovah Jireh the Lord who provides for anyone here today? I can testify that he is a provider. He's always provided for me. One thing I've learned, though, about God as a provider is that he doesn't always give me what I want and when I want it. Not because he doesn't love me but because he does. Like kids, we want everything now. (laughs) And then when we get it, we quickly forget how we got it or why we even asked for it in the first place. But thankfully, he has provided so much more for us, things that last. Even before we see our true need or are ready to receive it, God has already provided it for us. If he hadn't died and suffered so, We couldn't understand how terribly we do need him and what our true need is. His promises to us are many. He provides security like no other, not just for this life, but for the one to come. But to know him is up to us. And that's why he came, so we could. And I'm so, so thankful I know who Jesus is. Jesus provides. Yes, he does. The Lord Jesus provides. And what about Jehovah Rohe, the Lord who heals? Has anyone here been healed by Jesus Christ? Oh, I am the Lord that healeth thee, it says in Exodus 15, 26. I, when I chose, to, he's my healer. We could choose all. He's the provider, everything for us. He's healed me in so many ways, so many times. I was thinking about the different ways he healed me first in my body, you know, my ectopic pregnancies, two of those, surgeries, my cancer, healed my family, my friends. He even healed relationships, my marriage of 52, three years where I'm at now. (laughs) I lost track. (laughs) That's usually the man, huh? Yeah. (laughs) He healed my relationships, my my mother-in-law my stepmother, my sister. You know, if you are peaceful with the Lord and walk with him, he will open doors for everything, healing. You know, we always think we got to heal in our body. I I remember the time my my son couldn't get the Holy Ghost, and he kept getting an attack every time he was close to receiving it. And after the second, third time, I went to my pastor, and he laid his hand on his chest, and he received the Holy Ghost, and he's not had an attack like that since. So, you know, healing, you could go on and on. But then I remembered... um, um, how in the Bible, Jesus made many people whole, whole, you know, complete. And I thought of the time when I got baptized. I didn't know that word was even in the Bible. But I went home, and I remember saying to myself, that piece of that puzzle had been missing in my life. I didn't know that. I didn't know it. I just felt empty in some spot somewhere. And I remembered saying, that piece is put there. Now I'm made whole. And then when I read it in the Bible, I said, wow, I didn't even know that was in there. But I was made whole. I felt um, that he has touched my mind, my heart, 
heal my heart. So many times you need healing in your heart, you get offended. The healing is, comes in so many ways. My heart, my mind, my spirit, spiritually. Um, and then I thought, oh my goodness, the most important thing, when Jesus touches you, you're never the same. Never the same. So let him touch you today. But the most important thing to me was he made me whole. Jesus heals. The Lord Jesus is certainly our healer. Perhaps this one will be harder. Who can tell that Jesus Christ is Jehovah Nissi, the Lord your banner, the one who delivers you from your enemies? This is a harder one to uh, testify about, but he is our banner, and he will go before us in our struggles. And excuse me, but it, it, he has been a banner for me. It's almost 23 years ago that I was told I had to choose between my church and my God or my family. And he, I put him first. He is my banner. He went before me. And because he's also our healer, I put him first and he healed that relationship with my family. And so I am forever grateful that he is my banner and I will always put him first. The church is my banner. With these testimonies, how could I not be persuaded that Jesus Christ of the New Testament is Jehovah of the Old Testament and the same Jesus you here serve today? There are two more, though. Tell me, is there someone here that can tell us how Jesus is Jehovah Shalom to you? Sixteen thirty three. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I remember when um, the doctor had found what she thought was maybe like a lump or something in my throat, and I was laying for an ultrasound, and um, I just felt the Lord Jesus's peace to the point where it was like. It doesn't matter what they say. It's, everything is going to be fine. It did turn out being fine. It was just swelling from my um, acid reflux, but it was before I knew what the results were going to be. I could already feel him. And the reason I read this scripture, um, you, you shall have tribulation, but he's peace and he doesn't change. So that means that you can still have peace even in the midst of tribulation. So I'm not going to pretend that I'm, I was never afraid. I went through a time as an adult where I would go and lay on the floor at night in the, <laughs> in the living room until my husband came to bed. And he's delivered me from that because he is the peace. And I want to thank him for that. Jesus is peace. The Lord Jesus is the peace which passes all understanding. There's one more. Who can prove to me that Jesus Christ is Jehovah's sick canoe? The Lord is my righteousness. Just make me go last while I'm a mess, okay? <laughs> Psalm 1, 1 through 3. This is my life verse. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seateth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and light. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. John 7, 37 and 38 says, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. I believe the lie that on my own I could be strong enough to stand, 
when the storms of life came. I'm not going to let people hurt me. I am not going to let bad things happen in my life. I am going to be everything that I need inside of myself to sustain and protect myself. I pretended to be okay when I was not okay. We do that a lot. I had adopted an idol of self sitting on the throne where God should have been. I tried to control every aspect and person in my life, working hard to set the right environment or correct every wrong behavior, thinking I knew what was needed and how to do it all. But how can I, a flawed, imperfect human being, be both the problem and the solution? We all sin, which means making choices opposite of God's will for us. I was no exception to this, but I acted like I was the exception. I acted like the solution when I was also the problem. We can't be the solution to our problems. The world tells us to be stronger, be louder, and to speak our truth. But they never say that our truth is wrong, even if it hurts other people. We are encouraged to be our own gods, and it has led generations without the flow of the living water. Desperate and thirsty, trying to quench a desire that only God can provide. We know that we are to grow better every day as people. What God showed me recently was that my efforts doing things my way were not only hindering my growth, but hurting the growth of other people, especially those that I love. I was trying to be the living water, but I am not God. You're not God. The power of change and sustainability comes from a righteous God who works in pure and holy ways, a creator who wants to be known, and he's so gracious to make himself known to us. To be righteous is to be morally right and just, and that can only be God, because he is the potter and we are the clay. Me trying to take full control is like the clay ignoring the hands of its maker, forgetting that in the moment it can fall and shatter, but the potter sees everything and knows how to heal brokenness. The Lord is my righteousness. He can mend and build. He can restore and renew. The living water that fills the hole spiritually within us, providing endless nourishment that will never run dry. Isaiah 29, 16. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he hath no understanding? Isaiah 64, 8. But now, O Lord, thou art our father. We are the clay, and thou our potter, and we all are the work of thy hand. This is true. Who can doubt it? It is evident. It is true. Jehovah became my salvation when he became flesh, becoming an actual son, Emmanuel, God with us. God with us. Jehovah is become my Jesus.
hope we hold this solid night. A king is born in Bethlehem. Our journey long, we see the light that leads to the hallowed manger ground. What fear we felt in silent age. Four hundred years can he be found. But broken by a baby's cry, rejoice in the hallowed manger ground. of God here born to bleed a crown of thorns would pierce his brow and we beheld this offering exalted now the king of kings praise God for the hallowed manger ground amen Thank you, Happy Island One. Thank you for your help in our research. This season certainly has great reason for me, for you, for everyone. Happy birthday to the King of Kings, the one true God, the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs>
in a moment, you'll have a chance to twist a little thing until the light comes on, and then we'll sing this little light of mine. That's uh, uh, and we'll we'll dim the lights. We'll sing some carols or some Christmas songs. Before we do, uh, I would like to ask David and his parents to meet me in the back, and we'll get ourselves prepared for his baptismal. And uh, so looking forward to that. As we close talking through who the Lord Jesus Christ is, and I think Sister J.C. said it in that last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow living waters. And it tells us that those living waters is referring to the Holy Spirit, which he was about to pour out. And, and in another time, the Lord stands up and he says, uh, Come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden. He says, Come unto me and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And in this world, I want us to or at this moment as we celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's apply that birth to our lives by allowing His purpose in becoming flesh to be fulfilled in us. That we come unto Him, learn of Him, take His yoke upon us, and He promises that while He is no longer here in the flesh, He will fill our hearts with His Holy Spirit, and out of our bellies will flow that living water. As we celebrate his birth today, let's make it real in our lives by drawing closer to him and making him the Lord of our lives. Amen. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for everybody who uh, helped us in this, uh, help me out here, uh, program. And uh, I didn't have lines, otherwise I'd be like lying. But uh, <laughs> thank you for everybody who uh, helped us in this program. And uh, as Sister Renee begins the songs, if uh, somebody can turn down the lights, we'll do the candlelight thing. And David and his parents meet me in the back. God bless you, everybody. Merry Christmas. Amen.